Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God. Stand therefore, having your loins good about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith whereby able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer. Remember, boys and girls, the sword of the spirit is the only armor that we fight with. All the rest just protects us. But the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, is what we use to fight the devil with, just like Jesus did. Very good, boys and girls. And that's Ephesians 6, verse 11, and then 14 through 18a. Well done, boys and girls. Well, let's find out what happened next with David. Remember, we found out yesterday that God told Saul to go to Bethlehem and to the house of Jesse that God had chosen a new king, a man after God's own heart. And remember when, when Samuel got there, and first of all, he looked at the oldest son, and then he looked at all the rest of the sons and said, no, God has not chosen this. You see, God doesn't look like people do on the outside appearance. God sees the heart, and their hearts, their hearts was not where, where, what they needed to be, not right with God. God looks upon the heart. And so Samuel said, do you have any other sons? Well, yeah, the youngest, but he's out taking care of the sheep. Well, go get him. We're not going to sit down and eat until he comes. And so he came in there and God, Samuel looked at him and the Lord said, anoint him to be king of Israel for this is he. And so God chose a man after his own heart. And remember I told you yesterday that God was going to train him before he actually took over. Here's King Saul that God rejected because he did not obey God. And so here's David. When Saul was feeling miserable, his mind was all just crazy and he was angry and all upset because God was not with him. They sent for David to play a harp and to sing and make, make, just make Saul feel peaceful again. But God was using that in David's life. Well, one time when David was home, he would stay all the time at the palace, just some of the time when, when the king needed him. But David was home, and David was taking care of the sheep. His brothers had joined King Saul's army. And King Saul was now out, and they were fighting the Philistines. But actually, they really hadn't even started the battle yet. Because you see, on one valley over here one side of the valley was the philistines and over here on the other side of this big valley was israel and the philistines the bible says had a champion and this champion can anybody guess what his name is hmm, i would like to guess can you guess what this champion's name is that's right boys and girls you're so smart goliath and he was big. He was not over nine foot tall. He was huge. Look right up at him. In fact, look at look at how the these are men. And look at the size of them in comparison to this great giant, Goliath. And so Goliath, he would come out every day and he would raise his fist like this and said, Send somebody out here to fight me. And if they can kill me, then all of the Philistine army will be your servants. But if I kill the person, then then all of you, Israel, will have to be our servants. Well, the Bible says that no one, nobody would go out and fight him. They would not do it. Not a single person would go out and fight this man. And so, day after day, Goliath would come out and shout, send somebody out to fight me. If they will kill me, we'll be your servants. But if I kill him, then you will be our servants. And nobody would fight him. This happened day after day after day. 
Well, one day, one day, Jesse, David's daddy said, David, I want you to go check on your brothers. Here, bring some food, some cheeses and some bread and some food out for them and go check to see how it's going with them. And so David said, yes, father, I will go. And David let the servants take care of the sheep. And David went to where his brothers were. And while he was there talking to his brothers, out comes that giant again. Send somebody out to fight me. And if they can kill me, then all of the Philistines will be your servants. But if I kill him, then all of the Israel army will be our servants. Over and over again that happened. And David said, what on earth? What is, what is, who is this guy? Who is he? What, what will happen? What, what will happen if, if, what is this all about? And Eliab and his brothers looked at David and said, what are you doing here checking on us? What? Why aren't you home taking care of those sheep? What are you supposed to, you should be out there taking care of the sheep, not here. And David said, well, father sent me out here to check on you. And, and well, why are you letting this guy say all these bad things about the army of the Lord? Is there not a cause? And that's true, isn't there? Is there not a cause? Why, this person is saying bad things about about the army of the Lord. That That's against God. What? Go out there and fight him. God will help you. Well, David's brothers were furious. They were like, what are you talking about? You Get out of here. Go on back home and take care of the sheep. And they were so angry at, at David. They were just furious with David. And David was like, wait a minute. Is there not a cause? Come on. We can do this. We've got God on our side. They don't. They've got false gods. We can do this. I'll fight him. Well, someone ran and told King Saul that there was somebody willing to fight the giant. And he said, go get him. Bring him to me right away. And so they did. They went and got David. And they brought him to King Saul, who was sitting there in the tent instead of out there fighting like he should have been. He's just sitting in the tent. Look at this. And so... Saul looked at him and said, well, you can't fight him. You're, you're just a boy. You can't fight him. And David said, yes, I can. I can do it. Why? One day, there was a lion that came out and grabbed one of my lambs, and I killed that lion. And, and another day, there was a bear that came and slashed one of the small sheep, and, and I killed him too. The God that helped me kill the lion and helped me kill the, the bear will help me kill this giant who's cursing the name of our God. God will help me. God will win the victory. And that's exactly what David told King Saul. And so King Saul said to him, well, if you're going to go and fight this giant, you better put on my armor. And so King Saul had his servants get out the armor and help David put it on. Here's the King Saul. There's a servant helping him. And here's David. Boys and girls, take a look. Does it look like it fits very well? It doesn't, does it? It kind of looks like it's too big, maybe. I'm kind of thinking that maybe it's, it's just too big. And so the Bible says he looked at that and he and he said, you know, I, I'm not I gotta find it here. I've not tested this. I've not tried it to see how it works. I, I can't use this. I, I'm gonna have to go. I'll go in the name of the Lord. I'm gonna go in the name the Lord. And so here he is. He goes out there and now remember, his brothers were not very happy but David said, is there not a cause? And so here he is and he, he knew he, he couldn't he couldn't use that. I'm going to turn the page here because I'm going to you right on God's word. The Bible says he took his staff in his hand and he went down 
Remember, let's get that picture of that, that valley. See the valley down here? Down here, there's some water. See that? So David took off the king's armor, and he went down into the valley, and he picked up five smooth stones out of that brook. Just five smooth stones. 